Good morning, everyone. So today I'm going to be talking about the nervous system. So there are two systems that allow the body to monitor changes internally and respond to those changes in order to maintain homeostasis. Those systems are the nervous system and the endocrine system. The nervous system is made up of neurons or nerve cells. There are seven parts of the neuron, the chiton, dendrites, axon, Schwann cells, synaptic knobs, neurotransmitters, and the synapse. The chiton, or cell body, contains nucleus and other important organelles. Dendrites are multiple extensions coming out of the chiton. They receive messages for the neuron. The axon is a large extension coming out of the chiton. They send messages from the chiton to the synaptic knob, slash axon terminal. Schwann cells surround the axon and help increase the rate of nerve impulses. Synaptic knobs are found at the end of the axon and they contain vesicles with neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitters are chemicals that are released into the synapse. They, are either, they either stimulate or inhibit the adjacent cell. The synapse is a space between two neurons. Nerve impulses. So the nerve sends nerve impulses, duh, okay. Resting potential is when no impulse is being transmitted. The outside of the membrane has a positive charge. An excess of sodium ions are present. The sodium ions cannot diffuse into the cell and protein channels are closed. Action potential is when the neuron is transmitting an impulse. Charges are switched, so the outside has a negative charge and the inside of the cell has a positive charge. So the sodium channel is open and sodium flows in. A sodium potassium pump is used to reset the cell for the next impulse. The outside becomes positive again. It uses ATP. During the crossing of the synapse and neuromuscular conjunction, a neurotransmitter is released into the synapse in a process known as conjugation. The neurotransmitter either stimulates an adjacent nerve cell or inhibits it. Um, summary questions. So there are some summary questions, so I'm just going to explain it again in question and answer format, if that makes sense. So an impulse travels along a neuron and crosses the synapse through the following path. The dendrite to the chiton to the axon to the axon terminal to the dendrite of the next neuron. The sodium potassium pump uses active transport using ATP. Okay, so that should help it. You memorize it in a quick way. Okay, so the types of neurons. Sensory neurons transmit impulses and um, from a receptor to the brain or spinal cord. Motor neurons transmit impulses from the brain or spinal cord to an effector, which is a muscle or gland. An interneuron transmits impulses from a sensory neuron to a motor neuron, which is located in the brain or spinal cord. Reflex arc. So the reflex arc is located in the brain and spinal cord. It allows for quick response and stimulus. Sorry, quick response to stim stimulus. The pathway is receptor, the sensory neuron, to interneuron, to motor neuron, to effectors. Okay, so now there's other questions from the second part. So the three types of neurons are sensory neurons, which are in the receptor to the brain or spinal cord, motor neurons, which are the brain and spinal cord going to the muscle and muscle gland, and interneuron, which is sensory neuron to motor neuron. One example of a reflex arc is a knee jerk. The central nervous system. So the human brain is protected by the cranium, meninges, which are membranes, and cerebrospinal fluid. The cerebrum, also known as the, front, as the frontal lobe, is the largest portion of the brain. It, has, it is in two hemispheres and is connected by corpus callosum. It is involved with memory, senses, thoughts, language, reasoning, and voluntary activity, basically your personality. The cerebellum is located below the cerebrum in the back of the brain. It coordinates muscle activity, maintains muscle tone, and maintains balance with help of the middle ear. The thalamus is located below the cerebe cerebellum. It relays sensory impulses to proper parts of the cerebrum. The hypothalamus is located
located below the thalamus. It helps maintain homeostasis by regulating blood pressure, blood rate, body temperature, hunger and thirst, and emotions. The medulla oblongata, also known as the brain stem, controls basic life requirements like breathing, heartbeat, coughing, and digestive tract. Gray matter, which you just had us write somewhere, includes dendrites and chitons. White matter includes mitenated axons. The spinal cord is protected by vertebrae, meninges, and cerebrospinal fluid. It relies, um, it re relays messages between the body and the brain, and is the site of reflexes from the neck down. Questions again in Q and A format. So the cere the cerebrum controls personality. The cerebellum controls balance and muscle activity. The thalamus relays messages to the cerebrum. The hypothalamus maintains homeostasis. The medulla oblongata controls basic life functions. And the spine relays messages between the body and brain and does the reflexes. If the cerebrum were damaged, you'd lose your personality, memories, and possibly your ability to control your movement. If the, cere if the cerebellum was damaged, you couldn't move or balance. If the thalamus were damaged, you'd lose your senses. If the hypothalamus were damaged, you'd have trouble maintaining homeostasis. If the uh, medulla oblongata were damaged, you'd have trouble breathing or coughing. If the spinal cord were damaged, you'd have no reflexes, basically. So now we're going to talk about the peripheral nervous system. The peripheral nervous system consists of the nerves outside of the central nervous system. So everything except for your neck and your head. Um, everything from the head down, sorry. So it is divided into two branches, the somatic nervous system and the automatic nervous system. The somatic nervous system is involved with voluntary activities. It sends impulses to skeletal muscles. The autonomic, autonomic nervous system is involved with involuntary activity. It regulates internal responses. It is divided into two branches, the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system is your fight or flight response. It is active in times of stress and causes an increase in blood pressure, heart rate, respiratory rate. The parasympathetic central nervous system helps the body to conserve energy and causes a decrease in blood pressure, heart rate, and breathing rate. So let's go to summary number four. So if something happened to the somatic nervous system, you couldn't control your muscle nerve movement. If something happened to your autonomic nervous system, you couldn't control things like your heart rate and blood pressure, and you could have some serious health problems. The sympathetic and parasympathetic parts of the autonomic nervous systems work together to lower and raise involuntary activities like heart rate, blood pressure, etc. Now we're going to talk about nervous system disordered, disorders. Parkinson's disease is a disease in which the, I'm sorry, is a decrease in the neurotransmitter dopamine, which results in severe muscle tremors. Depression is a decrease in the neurotransmitter serotonin. A brain tumor is a tumor in a specific area of your brain, which disrupts functions. Meningitis is the inflammation of the meninges, which are membranes around the brain. Increases pressure on the brain and spinal cord, causing severe headaches and vomiting. It can be bacterial or viral. It is diagnosed by a spinal tap, which um, procedure, a spinal tap procedure is how you diagnose it. Polio is caused by a virus that attacks the central nervous system. It destroys neurons that control muscles. Multiple sclerosis is an autoimmune disease, which means that the body attacks itself. The immune system destroys the myelin sheath of motor neurons. It causes problems transmitting messages to effectors. Let's go to summary number five. So Parkinson's can be considered a homostatic imbalance because dopamine is a chemical that is beneficial in specific amounts. The same can be said for depression with serotonin. A brain tumor can cause homeostatic imbalance if that part of the brain does homeostasis because you're taking away that part. Um, so meningitis can 
be homeostatic imbalance because headaches and vomiting are not part of maintaining a stable living environment. They're pretty contrary to each other. Paleo, sorry, polio, not paleo. It's not a bad diet. No offense to kids. Anyway, polio is a homeostatic imbalance because it is a viral outbreak. Multiple sclerosis is a homeostatic imbalance because blocking the transmission of messages of two effectors stops the carrying out of procedures that you need to do to maintain homeostasis. Okay, so now let's talk about drugs and how they affect the nervous system. Drugs can increase stimulation or inhibit the adjacent nerve cell or decrease reabsorption of neurotransmitters. So they can increase what you get or decrease what you get and how fast you go. Drugs can cause an addiction because overuse can result in overstimulation of a nerve pathway. An increase in neurotransmitters may change the number of receptor proteins on an adjacent cell membrane. If the drug is stopped, the change in receptors will not draw um, for proper stimulation of the pathway. So the more you take, the less you, the more you need in order to get that same effect. Narcotics such as cocaine, meth, or um, morphine, are depressants that block pain and nerve pathways. They stimulate uh, the limbic system, which is your pleasure center. Cocaine is a stimulant that acts on the limbic system as well. It results in intense euphoria and is highly addictive. Nicotine is a stimulant that produces short-lived pleasurable feeling and decreases blood flow. It is less it is at least as difficult to give up nicotine as it is to give up heroin. So alcohol is a depressant that affects cell membranes, prevents transmission of nerve cells, and slows down the central nervous system. Barbitrate, aka sedatives and tranquilizers, are depressants that inhibit pain and induce sleep by reducing your heart rate, breathing, and blood pressure. Amphetamines, such as Adderall, stimulate an increase in heart rate and alertness. Hallucinogens distort, distort the way the brain translates sensory information, so like mushrooms. Um, marijuana is, te it temporarily brings you euphoria and memory loss, but both of which will go away soon. Opioids are depressants that increase heart rate and deeply pleat um, neurotransmitters. So your heart goes fast and your neurotransmitters are kind of running out. Stimulants, this is a broad group that includes many of the ones that we've already talked about, but stimulants increase the central nervous system. The presence decrease the central nervous system. And finally, let's just sum up this next part. So addiction is a homeostatic imbalance because the more drugs you take, the more neurotransmitters it takes to process a drug. So the more a person needs, gets dulled to it. So the more it takes for that person to get a reaction. So I hope that helps and Hope this helps you study. Adios, amigo.